few weeks ago, George Soros moved $100 billion. That's a staggering amount of money. $100 billion from all of his businesses and placed them into the George Soros Foundation. Now, if we think back to the days of the Clintons, they have or had a Clinton Foundation. Now, I know that the listeners to this radio show are very clued in, um, but new people who are just joining may may be shocked and maybe even disbelieving to learn that um, the Clinton Foundation wasn't about bringing fresh drinking water to starving Africans, um, but was about putting money in the pockets of those people who could be used to wheel and deal with. And foundations are like that. And George Soros had placed a huge amount of money, and I believe that was to pay for a form of a revolution or revolutions demonstrations. Uh, it was Mr. Soros who paid for the revolution in the Ukraine. Anyway, what we had was a situation where these people still absolutely hate President Trump. Now, whether you like President Trump or not, the fact is that the elite, the old guard, don't like him. So no matter how crass or or uh, chauvinist Trump is, you have to say the elite don't like him. And if the elite don't like him, that's because they don't control him. So they've been planning, <clears throat> they've been planning ways to remove him. Now, regular listeners to, to this show will know that I predicted an attempt to, you could say assassinate, but I use the word murder. You, assassination is like an, an authorized killing. Um, there's no such thing. So there was, uh, an attempt we know to uh, kill President Trump. And I perhaps, I don't know if I was the only person, I think I might have been the only person who uh, two months, three months back said October, November, there will be an attempt to uh, murder President Trump. <clears throat> and I said I'm going public with it because I know that will feed back to him and his security team so they can be really extra vigilant. <coughs> Excuse me. So we know the little that I know, it isn't much more than what's been released as a public, that a guy was caught just on the perimeter of the White House. Now, what these security guards didn't know was whether he was trying to come in or was on his way out. And if he was on his way out, had he planted a bomb? Was that a cover for a snooping device, a listening device? Um, but it transpired that he said that he was trying to blow up President Trump. Uh, so the next point was, well, how many of these guys are there? And did he place a bomb? And then the White House has a very uh, strong process of making sure the vice president and the president are not in the same location. Uh, they moved special troops in and they did a complete and utter sweep and found nothing. They didn't find anything. But it's no coincidence <clears throat> that I had been forewarned that there was going to be some sort of an attempt in October, November. And this was a real credible attempt um, in the sense that this guy actually believed uh, that he was going to kill the president. Now, whether he was subject to mind control, um, the point I'm making is he wasn't a, a, a high school prank. This wasn't a joke. He really intended to kill the president. So we need to look at that with the fact that the same day President Trump's Twitter account was hacked and taken down. We need to understand that a number of demonstrations in Hawaii and around some states kicked off uh, where they were calling for um, uh, President Trump to resign. Uh, the National Guard in a number of states were put on high alert, told to get ready for some form of uprising. When you look at all of that together, you think, well, that's probably as bad as it will get. And then we had a very, very genuine report of a missile that had been fired against uh, the the Saudi Arabian Air, main airport. Now, it wasn't just a missile. This was a ballistic missile. Now, the difference is that a ballistic missile, as on a trajectory where it's fired from the ground, 
and rises in an arc, um, goes to the edge of the Earth's atmosphere, depending on the type of missile, and then comes down again. As opposed to a missile fired, you know, from an aeroplane or from a low level that's only designed to go a few miles. This was a ballistic missile. What the public don't know is that the Saudis had been tipped off and they had the correct assets available to knock this missile out. And when you look at all of this together, you can see that this was a very well organized and orchestrated plan to try to destabilize the American government, i.e. President Trump. Had that missile struck the main airport, it could potentially have created a third world war because I believe that the blame would have been laid on Israel. And this missile was fired from Yemen, actually. So it didn't come from Israel. Well, but the tensions between the Israelis and the Arabs would have been ignited and then we could have seen a third world war that failed so we've had the most difficult situation over the last few hours which are now calming down the intelligence services were very slow to take things seriously these demonstrations um were not looked on as anything worth worrying about. It was only when the Twitter account went down that they began to, to be, to be quite serious. You look at the build up. Um, there's some very, very interesting video footage, um, of Las Vegas, um, and the helicopter above and what appears to be uh, gunshots, uh, coming from it. But this is more like what we would call a, a mini gun. Not a, just an ordinary gun. If this video is accurate, and I haven't had any information on that, but if it's accurate, that wouldn't surprise me. So we have some, not just rogue, but totally insane people who have decided that they have no future in the world that President Trump is created in the United States, and they're just going to go for it. They've gone completely and utterly insane. So, you know, David Icke uh, often uh, refers to people in government, um, you know, as, as, as just totally mad. Um, and that's what we've got here. We've got people who finally have snapped to, to organize the firing of a ballistic missile, to, to, to uh, take down the president's Twitter account. That is not some 15 year old kid sitting in some place this is a, a very well funded and organized organization that does not exist in government but exists to the edge of government so i've been quite busy um i never felt that we were in danger i never felt that the human race was on the verge or the precipice but what i did feel was that those people who have hidden in the shadows for so long have now decided to come out um it's 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 no coincidence that these people the top few percent uh who control what is it 80 90 percent of the world's assets these people now are feeling more and more threatened and it is a matter of public uh, record that a member of my family uh, who worked for a charitable organization, um, went on a demonstration and the video images are out there and went on a demonstration and, uh, this member of the family lost, lost their job uh, because a member of the board where my member of the family worked was one of these top elite people. And this member of the family went out and they were demonstrating why do the top one or two percent of the world hold 80 or 90 percent of the of the planet's wealth? So that was a warning to me and also to the member of the family. And in the member of the family's case, um, the police said that the demonstration that the member of the family went on contained 100,000. The demonstrator organizers said it was nearer a quarter of a million. So even if you take the lower figure of 100,000, to see the, my member of the family on a 10 second clip on the television of all the 100,000 demonstrators, they just picked on my member of the family for 10 seconds on, on primetime television showing my member of the family with a 
with a placard demonstrating. And then what, three days later, a member of the family lost the job. So <clears throat> these small group of people who control most of the planet's wealth are obviously now made a decision that they've got nowhere to go. We need now to be very, very mindful of um, some form of uh, electromagnetic attack because the 4th of November was also the day that the Department of Defense ran some simulations of how America would cope if half of its electronic communications went down. Commentators who were not in the know immediately said that this was a false flag, that these guys, the Department of Defense, were going to do this um, drill and then spring the real thing on us. And that's because these commentators don't have the intel, they don't have the knowledge. The reality was that the American Department of Defense had been credibly warned that there was an attempt by the same people who we've been talking about to attempt an electronic pulse that would destroy most of the landline telephones, knock out a lot of the cell phone telephones, uh, lock out the internet, um, the communication systems. And so what the Department of Defense was doing was legitimately saying, let's run a drill <clears throat> because we need to know how we're going to cope with this. So these were the good guys. They were the good guys attempting to uh, work a way through um, what could potentially be difficult. Now, that didn't occur, but we got the missile attack. So it's been it's been one of the most difficult for 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 sane people. It's been one of the most difficult times because the vast majority of the CIA, the NSA, MI5, MI6 are, in fact, good people. And they have been kept incredibly busy trying to um, sort out what they should and what they shouldn't go. Now, we've had a lot of these um, small terrorist attacks, not small if you've lost a member of your family but they're small in terms of the human population and it's all been leading up to this um, it's all part of the same picture it's all part of the same people but the important thing is on the positive note that that yet again the human race has come through it we didn't slide into a, into an apocalyptic war we didn't turn against our neighbor we didn't have to duck downstairs and with our tin of beans and our, and our rifle and, and fight off home invasions. The government did not attempt to take over. We had a situation where it was contained. And, and I really want people to, to be aware that it was serious. It was incredibly serious. And it, you know, it, it's, it's absolutely almost unbelievable. You look at the mainstream media, doesn't matter whether it's the BBC or Fox News. And, you know, it's completely covered uh, over as if it didn't exist. There's just a few little bits about this demonstration here and there. And you're thinking, well, how can even they um, not be aware of it? And of course, they are aware of it, but they're not controlled by President Trump. These people in the media are controlled by the same people who wish to see a return to the type of Clinton, uh, Obama type of administration. There was a, a very interesting article uh, that had come up on some blog accusing President Trump of, um, you know, being against global warming. Um, you know, we need Agenda 21. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's this new one, is it Agenda 2030, I think. The reality is that President Trump knows full well that global warming is not created by humans. Global warming is the fact that the sun's frequency of energy has changed and every planet in our solar system is actually heating up. This is part of the um, developing process of evolution. And I use the word ascension and we understand what, what we mean by that. Uh, it's part of the ascension of humanity and every other planet as well within the solar system is nothing to do with with burning fossil fuels but what the the un which is obviously part of the elite control are saying is that we need to control humanity to reduce carbon emissions 
to reduce global warming, which is an excuse to control humanity. Agenda 21 was all about killing people. You don't see that on the document, of course. It's all very laudable. Um, you know, fresh drinking water, the right to, to, to a reasonable job, etc., etc. But the way that these people want to get around this is by controlling people, either poisoning us or or, or just letting us have uh, no medical care, whatever. And Agenda 21, I think, came out in 1992. I don't know if it was the Rio Rio conference. I can't remember now. It's a few years back. But they now come up with another one for the few years ahead. Now, that's good because it means they failed to implement Agenda 21. And that's what these bad guys are facing. They're coming out with these agendas which they wish to, to put across and they're not being able to do it. So they say, all right, we better have another one. So they'll now say, OK, we'll, we'll call this Agenda 30 or whatever they want to do it. But the reality is they are not implementing in anything like the way they want to. But they have stretched the timelines. There's no doubt they've stretched the timelines. They are attempting to, to squeeze as much money out of the system before it collapses as possible. Dow Jones has now reached the highest level again. Um, it is just unbelievable. The the, the, the FTSE, that's the, the, the British stock market, is incredibly high. And the two countries that are built on debt uh, are on the verge of collapse financially. But they don't collapse in a way that we understand because the timeline is being drawn out. If I, and I'm not, but if I was a hugely wealthy person and I had property all over the place, I would put pressure on the government or whoever to say, give me time to get my assets out of these places because I can't just put it all in a suitcase and disappear. I'm going to need months to sell my property or move this or move that. And this is why we've not had the collapse, because there are too many very, very wealthy people who would lose a great deal until such time as they've drawn their money out. So. These last few weeks have been very, very important. And the last sort of 48 hours have been crucial. But it's a positive message that whatever they were planning, and I, and I can't say that I know exactly what they were planning, whatever they were planning has failed. We woke up in the morning, the sun rose up, the sun was shining, we got out, we did what we needed to do, and it didn't bring Armageddon down. And... And I need to publicly thank those members of the intelligence services who put their necks on the line. Simon. Simon. Hello, Simon. Simon, have I lost you? Where are you? And welcome back. We've uh, we've got Simon back on the line. Um, so, can you remember where you were? Where you you were talking about? Um... Absolutely, and I know why we got cut off. I oh, was right. actually thanking those members of the secret intelligence services who put their neck on the line um, did not obey any instructions to um, take a holiday or, you know, go dig a garden, actually went out as field men and women and did what they needed to do to keep people safe. And that's why we got cut off. So, um we don't sing the praises enough. For every bad person, there's two good people. Right, that's it so far, JP. Let's move on to the questions so we don't give anyone an excuse to cut us off again. Okie doke. So let's go over to my browser over here on the screen. One, two, three, four, five. What's five screens going today? Uh, screen. Where's my mouse? Um, 
Hang on a second. I, I've got five screens and I've lost my mind. <laughs> Which screen? Oh, it's over on that one. All right, get it down. There's no, all right, okay, I've got it. Um, and to contact form. Okay, here we are. Starting with today's... Um, uh, those of you who wish to get questions in, um, I start reading the questions that are posted uh, from Midnight Pacific, which is 8 a.m. UK time, uh, on the day of the show. Um, even that space between 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Pacific is enough for, like, several shows. So I, I even scoot through some of those. So, um, starting at... Uh, Zero 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 one <laughs> this morning. This is from Lirina. Uh, recently, a man came to watch me, and he was very clear. He watched me a long time without looking directly at me, then smiled hugely and went away. He came back several times. The last time I saw him, it was the middle of the night, and he appeared as a golden light, but only his head and shoulders. His eyes were like black coals. I talked to him, and when I stopped talking... His light body shifted till it was shaped into a ball of golden light. Then he disappeared. Who is this man and what is his purpose in visiting me? Thank you for all you do. I, I, right, thank you. That's very kind of you. Um, I wouldn't have a problem except you said his eyes were black. And that does not go well with what we would call a golden orb or a golden light body. There's something not right there. Um <clears throat> The golden, the, the black eyes apart. This could be anything from, from somebody from the spirit world, uh, attempting to communicate with you, to watch over you, to, um, just be in your presence. It could be something from another dimension, which, uh, has taken an interest in you. It could be a spirit guide. There are lots and lots of possibilities, but for me, the concern is that the eyes were black. That, doesn't work well with me if the body was light or golden. What I would say is that um, you need to get in some form of, or you would want to try and get in some form of communication from it um, and to see what its intent is. These, these things often work over many, many months, so they will literally turn up for a few seconds and disappear and then they would come back and spend a bit more time, a bit more time, a bit more time so that you become confident with them or you become used to it. And what you need to know is whether this is a benevolent, helpful being or whether it's not. Uh, now, it may well be that its eyes are black and that's just the way it is. So we don't want to be judgmental. All I'm doing is flagging that up as a concern. I would normally expect something like that to have uh, blue eyes, generally speaking, um, although possibly green or yellow. But to have a black eyes is, <clears throat> is unusual for me. So my advice to you is be on your guard. Uh, if you can get into some form of communication, don't promise anything. Don't give any anything. <clears throat> don't make any deals. But ask it what its intent is. What does it want? Also specify that you don't want it to come within, say, I don't know, six feet of you. So you, you need to tell it to respect your space. Um, and it, if it has a message for you, what is that message? And then you need to you know, think about that very carefully and decide whether you think this being is or this um, apparition is, is a beneficial type or not. So uh, just be on your guard. I can't. I can't tell you what it's about because nobody has enough information from it. Um, so that's my best advice. I think you should keep a diary and jot down when it arrives, how long it's with you. And if you think it might have communicated with you, but you don't know, then hypnotic uh, regression is a possibility. Um, I'm always a bit careful with that, but there are some times when a regression is very useful and it might be that this being has communicated with you but consciously you don't remember it so uh, there are a few pointers there i hope that's helpful it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting problem thank you okay uh this is from rowan uh in russia 
Hello, Simon. Can you give a little update on what's going on in Russia in terms of moving towards disclosure, fighting cabal, and or advanced technologies to be released to the public? Bless you for your constant work from Roman. Uh, thank you. Thank you from, from Russia. Thank you very much indeed. Um, the, the importance or the uh, energies of the Russian government have shifted uh, in December... The Russians are going to, um, although they have actually announced it, they're going to really go for it publicly with the new currency. Uh, it's the currency that the Chinese, the Indians and the Russians have been working up for some considerable time. Although there was an announcement a few weeks back, it is actually, I understand, December that all the banks, the central bank in Russia will actively go ahead with this new currency. That is a direct challenge to the dollar. So there's a lot of um, movement towards that, which is uh, really discomforting the Rothschilds um, and people like George Soros and others who could live with the fact that there was no Rothschild bank in Russia, but cannot live with the fact that there is going to be a challenge to the whole Rothschild banking system. So that's the, the point there. In terms of um, some form of disclosure, uh, President Putin is no way going to disclose until he feels that he's economically secure and militarily secure. Um, the, the, the whole problem with the interceptor missiles that the, the, the West, NATO, which is again unfortunately part of um, this very nasty evil elite, although paid for mainly by the Americans, I might add. Uh, the whole point about the interceptor missiles was nothing to do. They were placing these on, on the borders with Russia. It had nothing to do with rogue states firing missiles. About everything to do with trying to, if the situation came to it, take down Russian satellites. That's what all of this business with interceptor missiles and why Putin didn't want them on, on countries that were on bordering his land. President Putin, I don't know if many of, of our listeners picked this up, but President Putin uh, two weeks ago, I'm a bit confused with time now, um, made a, a comment <clears throat> that he now had technology that was not of this planet. <clears throat> Excuse me. He now has felt prepared to say... Um, we have technology which is not of this planet. Now, to those people who understand what he's saying, what he's, he's really threatening is if you, ha if you have a go at us, if you attack us, we have the means to defend ourselves in non-Earth terms. So he was publicly saying what the elite had only guessed at. So... He believes now that the technology that he has exceeds that of America. Now, that's astonishing. If we look back to what we used to call the Cold War, which kicked off in, what, 1947, 1948, 49, the United States of America was about 25 years ahead of the Soviet Union. And it fluctuated. And I think the closest that the old USSR ever got was about 10 years behind the US. And then Ronald Reagan came along and Star Wars, and that put America a good 25 years ahead of Russia. And now, due to Nordic, Nordic uh, technologies and other technologies which have come from other human-type federation or, or, or um, uh, groups, that have come to Russia, Russia is now technologically more advanced than the US. First time in the history. And that's why President Putin now is so confident and can come out and say what he said. So disclosure can only happen when Russia, from Russia's point of view, when it's economically secure and it's militarily secure. Now, it's militarily secure now, um, first time ever. And it's on the verge of being economically secure. So when that occurs, we may well see President Putin saying, to, to heck with the rest of you, I'm actually going to come out and make a statement. 
um, in the last question you asked there was about release of technologies. The deal was with the U.S. <clears throat> because President Trump um, was the president, Putin had said, look, uh, looking at the treaties that were made many, many years ago, the U.S. has the lion's share of, you know, Antarctica. So you do the deal. You extract the technologies. But the understanding was that Trump would ensure that some of those technologies went to Russia. So that's where we are with it. So it's the U.S. that is obtaining these hidden technologies, not the Soviet Union. So, again, I hope that's a helpful update. Okay, one moment. Okay, so this is a, a question regarding um, last time. All right. Okay, uh, this is a, a question uh, from Martin. During the radio show from uh, the first of October, my question was answered. It was the question with the drawings. It was not enough time to, for Simon to answer. And I didn't understand his brief response about the organically built house. Simon mentioned that you would have to explain more. Uh, could we go back to the drawings and the question? Do you remember that? I can't. No, I cannot remember the question. I cannot remember the drawings. That's not because it wasn't important. It's that I exist, as, as, as we all do, really, on, on an energy connection. And I, I have to live in the now and the future. And... I'm looking at so many things that are occurring now that I'm, I suppose my mind doesn't have the capability of, of of bringing into clarity. I remember that there were drawings and we had a talk about it, um, but I, I tend not to dwell on what's what's gone. Um, so I'm I'm not really going to go down that road. I mean, what 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 the guy can do is is connect with me, send me an email, and then I can you know deal with it on a one to one basis. Yeah. It's, uh, I have to say, I mean, it's, it's very difficult, um, if somebody sends me something to then send it along to Simon. I, I'm, you know, I've, I've got a radio station to run. There's, uh, there's hundreds of other people who are, who are trying to get through. Um, I'm, please don't send things to me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, yeah. look, I mean, it is a bit, it is a bit like pop luck in the sense that, you know, that there, there is just me in terms of doing this sort of work. Yes, I get people who very, very kindly offer to help from time to time, but there is just me at the end of the day doing this. And, you know, I, I can't, and I, I'll never be able, unless, you know, the world changes, I'll never be able to um, speak to everyone as the way I would like. Um, but if he does want to send an email, there is the chance that we'll pick it up because I am, I am now rebooking. I've, I've had my move. You know, this is the first... Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday was the first day I went back to work, as you could call it, because I had all the disruption of moving, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and I'm picking back up now. So I will be going back through those emails where people have tried to get hold of me and, you know, I'll pick it up. And it's, it's lovely because people say, well, I emailed you and I just gave it up and suddenly you connect with me. And this is the way it is. I will find that email. And I will respond to people. So, you know, please email me. If I don't get back to you, please don't get cross. It's not personal. There's nothing like that. I am not, a, 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 you know, a, a, a washing machine repair station where I've got 20 members of staff um, doing the, the, the phone calls out. It doesn't work like that. And I think sometimes people just don't understand. There's just me. There's just me. And I do my very best. So please send some emails if I can pick them up. Um, then I will deal with you on a one-to-one -one basis. Thank you. Okay. Now um, he's got. Oh, I just I just want to Sorry. say to to our American uh, listeners and other listeners, if you're hearing bangs and crashes, uh, that is not a revolution taking place in Great Britain. It is just kids letting fireworks off uh, at the top of the road, um, which is echoing down over the hill. So um, if you are hearing bangs and crashes, it's just firework night in Great Britain. We're not having a revolution. More's the pity. But anyway, uh, that's, <laughs> that, that's, uh, that's what we do on the 5th of November. You guys do it on the 4th of July. We do it on the 5th of November. Um, so th this uh, question, we were told that the humans have six times failed on the Earth in the past. Now we are fighting to win on the seventh attempt. 
The question is, in what time frame uh, from and to approximately were these six failures happening? What was the cause? Right, that's a very interesting question. It's the first time anyone's actually picked up on that. Um, uh, I'll, I will answer the question, but I'll just preface it by saying, do you remember the Matrix film? Uh, do you remember where the, 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 the very end of the, the final one, near the end of the final film, there's a three-parter, wasn't it, where it transpires that every so many years um, there's a revolution and there's a character like Neo who appears and nearly wins but doesn't. And there's a reduction of the human race. It's reduced, but then it grows and grows and grows and grows and it reaches a peak and then there's another Neo appears, and so it goes on. Um, what the, 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 the Polish brothers were trying to do was give information that the human race is trapped. It is held down, but the human spirit is indomitable. The human spirit wants to break free. And so there are these occasions when humanity pushes forward and, and, and either will or won't quite make it. So... If we look at approximately 250,000 years ago, when the 12 strands of DNA were uh, tricked away from humanity, if we look at the more recent times when, when the Anunnaki, um, 25,000 years just before we call the fall of Atlantis and Lumeria, so from the very first moment that the DNA strands were tricked away from people, the human consciousness has been striving to break free. Um, we have a very interesting situation, where we would call it the, 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 the Great Flood with Noah and the Ark. And that was one such instance where humanity was on the very verge of breaking free and there was the deluge caused. Think about the Tower of Babel where the, uh, the, the the Bible says that mankind was challenging God. Well, if we take away God and use the word King, Lord, Reptile, humanity was working as a group. And so the, the story goes that the, the tower was destroyed and there was one language upon the earth. And so we were all given different languages, English, French, German, Spanish, so that we couldn't work as a group, that actually has a lot of truth in it. If you have a billion people on the planet all speaking the same language, imagine what you could achieve. That's why English is such a powerful language, because the Americans, the British, the Canadians, the Australians, and several other countries use English. The powerful countries speak English. That's why it's a dominating uh, language. But imagine if all of the Africans spoke English. Imagine if, if all of Europe spoke English. So there are key points in Earth's history where humanity has put aside its differences, put aside the fact that you might be yellow skinned or black skinned or white skinned, male or female, and said, we recognize we're being oppressed. We need to work together to overthrow it. And on six occasions, humanity has nearly got there, but been stopped. On this occasion is the first time we've bought through the door. 2012, the 31st of December 2012, was the very first time humanity had made it that, that far. If, 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 if the audience thinks back prior to 2012, how many terrorism false flags had we had? How many ongoing um, paedophile incidences had we had since 2012, we've had more disclosures of corruption in government, paedophilia, Satanism, all of this, um, than we've had ever. It's because human consciousness is evolving and we are outstripping the low density, evil, fourth dimensional nasties. What I'm saying here is that it is becoming harder and harder and harder for evil intended people to lie and trick and cheat humanity. So since 2012, as, as a group of people, the human race 
has been able to see through the lies in a way it never did. They couldn't pull a Twin Towers now ever again because people wouldn't buy it. So these evil, evil people are, are having to be more and more evil, more covert. I can't use the word clever, but they're having to be more devious in order to try to hoodwink the population. So we are seeing a environment now where desperate people who cannot win because this is the seventh push. They're finished. They're trying to suck all the money off this planet. They're trying to uh, wipe out people who oppose them. They are trying to get safe havens for those people who cannot leave the planet. Then they're going to New Zealand. Just have a look at the number of people who've either gone to Switzerland or New Zealand. It's incredible. And when the vast majority of the top tier have managed to squeeze through the hole, then the edifice will come tumbling down. So the answer to the question is, ever since the human race was tricked, it has been working as one to try to get back what was stolen from it. But when you are a good person, and the human race is by and large good, you don't like to fight fire with fire. You don't want to do evil things because then you are no better than the people you are trying to remove. You just replace one despot with another. So the good people can't play the same game. And because we can't be devious like that, we are at a disadvantage in the short to medium term. But in the longer term, the fact that the good people are good and the evil people are evil means that the evil people will fall. But it's taken this length of time. And this is why it's a positive message. You know, and, and don't go with all of this stuff on YouTube about we're about to be wiped out. And, you know, it's my job, I believe, to alert people to what is happening but I don't do it because I am wanting to feed a frenzy of fear. I do it because I need people, hopefully, to go away and do the research and try and find out what's happening. But it's never with the intent that we're all finished. Far from it. This is a successful story. And we're going through the pain. So it's a good question. Thank you. Here... Yeah is an interesting question and also segues beautifully into the last question. 9-11 and the Pentagon. This is from Karen in, uh, in South Africa. It seems to me that most people have forgotten the Pentagon was also attacked during 9-11. Perhaps focus has been deliberately drawn away from it. Apart from the talk around what actually hit it, I heard another weird rumour that the Pent Pentagon was housing a large demon which was the energy source powering the USA and breaking open one side of the shape was meant to let it out. I've wondered about this for years. Do you have any intel on the real story there? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, um, that's quite fascinating. Um, that's a quite a fascinating possibility. Um, I don't go with it because the demon wouldn't need that shape to exist in. And if you were to exist in a building housing thousands of people, then you would be discovered. You would be much more likely to want to um, sit in a graveyard. I'm not joking. I'm being quite serious. You'd want to sit in a graveyard or you'd want to sit somewhere where you would not be detected. So that's a nice theory and it sounds very plausible. I don't go with that at all. Um, if you do your research, you'll see that the section of the Pentagon that was blown up, it was a bomb. It wasn't a missile. It wasn't an airplane. It was a bomb. Um, the section that was blown up was the, the, the United States Navy. The Department of the Navy was the one that was hit. And the reason for this is that the United States Navy, of all of the United States forces, um, had some of the strongest claim to um, managing the alien agenda. <clears throat> if you just think back to Star Trek, the spaceships are called ships. 
And on the sea, on the ocean of the, of the world's oceans, we have aircraft carriers. Well, the United States do have fleets and aircraft carriers. So a long time ago, it was argued that wouldn't we be better if we had these aircraft carriers and these ships up in space? Literally, we, we built atomic powered craft and we went out and the Navy, in the same way the Navy um, is on the ocean, it should be in space. And they won that argument. So the Navy was always in a strong position because most people would say, well, I can see the Air Force because they fly in the air. I can see the Air Force having a say in it, but I can't understand the Navy. Well, that's why. And in the very early days of Truman, except President Truman, etc., the Navy had a very powerful say on, on the, the original Majestic 12. Um, so what happened was that, that the Navy started to ask questions about 9-11. This is before it happened. And the Navy let it be known <clears throat> that they did not support 9-11. And as a result of that, they were threatened. Um, and the, the explosion was a warning to them um, by some of the uh, long removed people now, but under Bush's, the original Bush's government, people like Dick Cheney, etc., etc., who incidentally um, was very involved in, in the production of precious metals from Mars. Just think about Arnold Schwarzenegger in his film Total Recall, where there's a Mars um, corporation mining precious minerals from Mars. Well, this is a dig on, on Dick Cheney because he was in charge of the Mars corporation. Anyway, we're getting off the, the track here. But uh, I know for a fact, uh, no, no names now, but a member of staff, female member of staff, uh, who was employed by the United States Navy. She wasn't on a ship. She worked at the Pentagon and she got a phone call from her boss's boss the night before and said, um, I won't use the name. Hey, uh, you little girl, because she had a, a, a two year old girl, I think. Was she about one year old? Your little girl. Um, don't don't put her in the Pentagon crash tomorrow. Take her into your office. And what this this woman did was she brought her child in and put it down by her desk. Uh, because the section that was hit was very close to the crash. So the reason that the Pentagon was was bombed was because it was a threat by the elite to the United States Navy. That's exactly why that happened. Um, the demon, I like the demon idea, but not for that building. Thank you. Okay. Now, this is a question from Central Australia from Hazelnut. Please tell us more about prime creators that create planets like Gaia Terra. Who are they? How do they embody? And what is the difference between normal souls and them? Right. <clears throat> there is only one creator, but there are... Um, I don't can use the word junior creators because the human race is creators. We are creators, but we are creating uh, within the dimension that we exist in. <clears throat> so it doesn't mean we're any less, but we create, most of us create in the dimension that we are in, in, a, in a more dense, heavy environment. The uh, things that we can create are not as exciting, perhaps, as if you're in, in a higher dimension. Some uh, off-planet species have lost their connection to humanity to the extent that they cannot connect the uh, strands of DNA with source and create. That's why so many negative aliens are particularly interested in humanity, because we can do this, because humans can connect to the prime creator to source and because we have the capability of connecting our DNA and humans are fantastic you know you, you, you wouldn't imagine it when you walk down 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 the, the shopping mall down down the high street and you look at some people and you think god you you've you're in a terrible state you know look at you you know you, you're just just sitting in front of a television you're eating horrible food um, your, your expectations are of going to the bar or the pub or the, 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 the match, the football match. And, and how, how are you human? But the reality is that 
that's because these people have been conned and tricked. Human beings have the potential to be some of the most fantastic things anywhere in the multiverse. Um, and that's that's what we need to, to grasp hold of. And that is what is, is, is after. That's what these things want. They want this connection to source. So there is one prime creator. The, the off-planet entities that I've spoken to uh, don't call God God. They just say, you know, the prime creator or or the creator, and they don't even understand it. So if they don't understand it, how are we ever going to understand it? But maybe humans understand it in a different way. There are a number of other beings that have chosen to create. This is the key. Most beings do not choose to create. Most most beings are service to self. If you're service to others, you wish to create uh, and don't get confused with a, with a guy that opens a zoo and says, I want to have all these animals in cages and then people can come and pay me money and they can look at it. That's not what the multiverse is meant to be. It's not different planets and then these people can come and look at it. It, it is pockets of creativity where those people should have free will to develop and learn so you have going right back beyond anyone's real knowledge or memory you have a number of beings that were tasked with creation if you think about the bible even um satan you know lucifer let's use the the, the two terms was portrayed as a fallen angel but he was actually portrayed as one of the right hand men if i can call him that to god so we have a slice of truth here about some angels, can't think of a better word at the moment, who were given the capability above humans to create. But their remit for creation could never cross the boundary of the, the great creator. You have a range of creators. And so far more than most people would understand and expect. So you might have somebody who could create a planet, but somebody who could create plants. Um, and and it's whether they work together. So the Bible is accurate in the sense that, 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 that the earth was created. It did not get created because there was a big explosion and this chemical ran into that chemical. You know, these things were were brought here. Um, you know, just like if you if you were to take a slice of a Martian meteorite, you would see bacteria in that meteorite. And scientists today, by and large, have accepted that a number of the the, the biological uh, bacteria on this planet have come from somewhere else. So they've moved now from this purely earth-based situation to the fact that much of, of what is on the earth has come from elsewhere. So that's a good question, um, but we will never fully know until we ourselves have evolved to that level where we can, for want of a better word, sit around a table and have a chat with them. Right, cup of tea time, I think. Well, so it is, and... Um... My, I thought today we'll have some Van Morrison, which is oh, well. a song contacting my angel. Oh, wow. You see, and I've spoke about angels. There we go. Wasn't that absolutely synchronistic? Spot on. Welcome back to uh, Connecting Consciousness with Simon Parks. It's the 5th of November, 2017. And uh, that was a nice little song, eh? Yes, it was excellent. So, from... Uh, oh, uh, it's the second hour. Do you want to do your... Um, usually do your... Uh, yes, um, I will do. I've got a, a reduced list, not because there's been reduced support, but because my uh, PayPal site my paypal thing was taken down um very kind of them but they have uh, reinstated it so just another little uh, bit of hassle for me um so this isn't a full list 
and I'm very sorry about that. But that's not because I I, I have not you know don't care. It's because I wasn't able to. I want to thank John D. Uh, it was a very 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 helpful donation. Thank you. That's really kind of you, Stefano, Tracy, Melissa, Mary, John H. Uh, Onshore Media, Alan, Benjamin, Next Level Consultants, sounds very good, Max, Richie, uh, K-Man Lee, um, Piluti, Nan, Gillian, and Becky. And after that, I'm sorry, but I couldn't get any more names because somebody decided that um, they should just cut me off. But it's just literally been reinstated five minutes before we went on air. Mm, so... I'll try and catch everyone up on the next show and try and add you on there. So for those people who have donated over what was a very busy time and, you know, had to pay some removal men and all the rest of it, thank you very much indeed. That has really helped. It's kept me doing what I'm doing, um, kept me on target, and uh, God bless you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> and me and, and uh, who else? In, uh, and Lyra in the chat room going, the John D. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know who that is, but anyway, his name is John D, and I'm very grateful to him. <laughs> John D, the Elizabethan um, magician. Oh, 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 seven. Yes. Oh no! Well, who knows? <laughs> Might be back. <laughs> <laughs> so here's a nice long question. Settle back, grab your tea. Oh, you've got a nice fresh one. So uh, let's see. Uh, where's my last one? Okay, this is from someone called D. Who's this from? Gobenheim. Okay. Hello, you amazing beings. It's been said many times, but not yet enough. You two are really causing great waves of change. Multiple dimensions of gratitude towards you both and everyone behind the scenes at Wall Spirit Radio. About seven years ago, our meditation group met at a park near a lake and spent some time playing psychic games and trying experiments like changing the pH of water with our intentions before meditating in a circle. I was the only one capable at that time of achieving a difference. Whilst in the meditation, I started to get a very heavy body feeling, almost as if I was going into the earth or into myself. I started to see a set of legs as if they were mine, and I was wearing a robe and sandals and could see someone wearing similar clothes beside me sitting there as well. Being younger, a bit nervous, and too conscious of what was going on, I started to question what I was seeing and, and got caught in what seemed like in between then and now. The feeling was very uncomfortable and it felt like all my muscles wanted to tighten and clench up and I had quite a hard time talking. The lady who helps us at meditations got a message for me the following day in her daily meditations telling her that I was going back to a time and space when I had a connection with Christ. But it was my built-in religious borders that halted my ability to stay there. I guess what I'm trying to ask is, do you think that, quote, Jesus and Mary had and still have a living lineage today? And I know the second coming of Christ is a global happening this time, but do you think maybe the souls of Jesus and Mary may have come back? Do souls get to come back? Who asks? <laughs> if so, who asks? Sorry, uh, not sorry for the string of questions. Much love <laughs> from, from Goberheim. So um, essentially, uh, the Jesus and Mary lineage... Um, do you think their souls have come back? Is there still a living lineage? I'm sure you know a bit about this. Um, there is a living lineage, and, and you, you, you have uh, a range of people from the crackpot to the very genuine people who have some form of um, connection here. Um, you know, one of the uh, Rothschild family members who's been estranged by the family is convinced that uh, she is connected in some way um, why someone from the Rothschild family would be connected like that is beyond me but it's very very popular of course to think you are Napoleon or you are this or you are that the reality is that the Christ consciousness exist in everybody but in certain people uh, it has a greater root it doesn't mean that person or persons are any better than anyone else it just means that they have an insight into that time or they'll have a memory uh, of that time in a greater way than perhaps other people would have 
And when we go on to meditation or whether we go to what you could loosely call a holy place, probably a better word is a sacred place or a portal, um, you can, if you're that way inclined, you can connect and connect with the energies of that time. And, you know, if you were wanting to evolve humanity as a, a great creator does, then if we take the true Christ consciousness, not the Christ of the Bible, not the religious uh, control element, but the true creational force of Christ, then you would want that to be reincarnated on the planet in a number of places because you would want that to act as bastions, to act as um, living trees, to put down roots, to try to connect and channel and to develop. So yes, absolutely. Um, you know, just as uh, the soul of a person can have a fragment of it that was belonging to a person in history, you know, um, so we can all have this flavour. And what we have to be careful of is, you know, everybody wants to be King Arthur. Everybody wants to be this, that and the other. Who wants to be the cleaning lady? Who wants to be the janitor? When did you ever hear anyone saying, um, you know, I, I was the guy that, that cleaned out the pigs? No, no, everybody was, I was King Arthur, I was this, I was that. We have to be very, very careful. Um, many people who have strong past memories can remember being burnt at the stake, burnt as a witch, drowned as a witch. These are genuinely real things that happen to people. Um, we can't all have a lovely, happy, jolly good times because how do we evolve? How can we evolve unless we are challenged? And if we've got the nous, as we say in Great Britain, to actually say, what can I learn from this? Um, incidentally, during the during the the, the, the tea break, um, where I am actually, you can see quite a bit of the space. It's, it's not too built up here. Um, I saw a, a UFO. Um, what was fascinating about this was it was firing a beam. It's not. It wasn't near. It was a bit of a distance, but it was firing a beam. Of light down. Now I have had an experience uh, which I refer to as beams before where I've been in a place where um, beams of light have come down um, and uh, there was no way that that was the moon beams and so it was interesting that again I've just seen something that's projecting beams. It was not a helicopter shining a light, you know, it wasn't a a guy escaped from the local penitentiary or, or, or the main prison. This was a UFO with a beam of light. So there's a lot of activity on the planet at the moment. And I would expect many more people to start seeing things than they have been in the past. So, you know, let's keep our eyes open and see what happens. Thank you. Very interesting. I had a, a dream some months ago and... Uh... Uh, it was a UFO that came down and then it sort of shot beams <laughs> and then shot back up into the sky. That was in interesting. a dream. I made okay. a little film of it as well. <laughs> Excellent. Um, many of these beams are not to do with uh, laser beams or plasma weapons. They are designed to uh, activate the DNA of their targets. Um, yes, I know we've got lots of drawings of cows being lifted up by a flying saucer and it's on the beam. But most of these beams are designed to hit a target, which is a person, and then elevate their consciousness, elevate their DNA, do something, even if it's time locked. So it may not happen for six months or a year or two years. That's primarily what those things are. They're firing beams to interact with a person and in a gentle way evolve them. So your dream. Um, JP may not have been a dream in the true sense of the word. It may have been something that actually happened to you a while back, but your subconscious was now releasing to your conscious mind uh, in the dream shape. This is what occurred. So I find that very interesting. Beams are 